here we are, traveling along the side of the Great Pyramid. Notice See, every still part single... of the original casing stones at the bottom. Right. At an at a angle, they would go up and some of them weighed, as Chris had pointed out, 60 tons. The casing stones, some of them? Stephen? Yeah, the casing stones. The casing stones weighed 60 tons in some cases? No, no. So leaving the Great Pyramid behind. Cairo in the background. And heading towards the second pyramid. Khafre, so called. Wow. Are pavement stones. This was purposely laid to, to level the plateau. So this is artificial stone, everything you see. Look at some of these blocks. Hakim would point to one 30 feet long rectangle weighing 200 tons. Some of these stones, so you understand, before they built anything up, they leveled the plateau. But this is all artificial construction. And what you're seeing along the line, you'll see holes. Sometimes you'll see square holes. Sometimes you'll see round holes. They originally were open to the tunnels underneath to solar energy to heat the water. According to Abdel Hakim, water is the source of the energy of the pyramids. Water. Breaking the bond from hydrogen and oxygen and water releases a tremendous amount of energy. So, so uh, and as you see, as Yusuf explained to coming up, these the lower courses of this pyramid were encased in this rose granite. All of this that's come off were the lower courses. So, did they quarry this? Of course not. They didn't take this granite. This is evidence of the cataclysm. Ah. Direct evidence of the cataclysm. These stones were weakened, <laughs> fell off, and then they could come with metal chisels and attack the stone. But they could not do this. Take these off without some, some event to happen. So it's not just quarry. They will tell you it's been quarried. It's not. This is all of it. So this is the second pyramid, commonly called the Khafre Pyramid, the one in the middle. You can see the casing stones are still on the upper courses there. The first five courses on the bottom were rose granite. The rest of it was limestone. And then this is the little one, Menkara. And the Great Pyramid, so-called Great Pyramid, Khufu is in behind here. What's uh, possibly especially important for us who have been looking at Peruvian things is you can see some knobs in the outer casing of the uh, Mancari pyramid here. It'll be interesting to see if they bear any resemblance to the ones that we've been looking at in Peru. So, here at the Mancara pyramid, the casing stone, which is red granite from Aswan, brought 500 miles from the quarry. It's about two, at least two feet thick, so it's not like a thin veneer layer. It's at least two feet thick. Again, there's Khafre pyramid in the background. A lot of knobs on these, uh, these stones on the outside, very similar to what we see in Peru. And the indigenous story is similar, again, to what we find in Peru. And that is that the, the knobs there were for the tuning of the wall because this wasn't simply a functional thing. If this and these were indeed ancient power plants and vibratory structures, then it, it kind of makes sense that you would have to tune the, tune the exterior in order to achieve the vibration, the harmonic that you were after. At least that is a more, I think, logical explanation than the idea that those knobs were there to help lift the stones, because a lot of the biggest ones don't have any knobs on them. And then it's on this side, we see the little, little pyramids. So you can see that with this baby pyramid too, there are the uh, casing stones too still intact. One of them has a knob on it. So if the knob was for lifting, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And there you see how 
the pyramid was stripped. This side was completely stripped of its original granite used as construction material for much later buildings, possibly during the Roman times. You can clearly see how the entire exterior of granite has been stripped off one of these baby pyramids. Again, the coffery one here. And the whole area is strewn with the remains of cannibalization of an ancient structure in ancient areas by later people. And before you say, oh my god, isn't that awful, how could they do this? Remember, these buildings are a minimum of around 4,000 years old and could be much older. Over that period of time, cultures come, cultures go, and especially later cultures who arrive and have no comprehension as to the significance of the original constructions. They look at these things as simply quarries. You don't only find that in Egypt, you find that in Peru and throughout the Middle East, I'm sure, and many places in the world.